This week I'm driving the 2020 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. This is the Rubicon 4x4 with the 3 liter V6 turbo diesel, straight out of the Ram 1500. That's paired to an 8 speed automatic transmission. This Wrangler is painted in punkin metallic paint, and that's punk apostrophe N. We have a lot of equipment on this Rubicon, including leather trimmed seats, the LED lighting package, the 8.4 inch radio and premium audio, and the adaptive safety package. This also has steel bumpers front and rear. And of course the diesel engine is a $4,000 option with its special 18.3 gallon fuel tank and 3.73 rear axle ratio. The eight speed automatic transmission that mates to that is a $2,000 option because it's been specially developed for the diesel. This also has the Sky One Touch Power Roof, which is very nice. All of this adds up to a total price of $65,100. Jeep gives you a five year, 60,000 mile powertrain warranty and a three year, 36,000 mile basic limited warranty. This diesel does do pretty well at the pump for a Wrangler. It gets 25 miles to the gallon in the combined cycle, 22 in the city, and 29 on the highway. This 3 liter diesel makes 260 horsepower and 442 pound feet of torque. Let's walk you around this thing and go for a drive. All right, guys, this new diesel Wrangler Rubicon. It's not cheap, but I think it's worth it, especially if you're gonna be using this thing for some heavier duty, off-roading, longer road trips, overlanding, perhaps a little bit of towing. If you're just gonna be putzing around town in this thing, don't get the diesel, get the V6. These new modern diesels are much better suited to uh, hard, long use. It's where they operate at their most efficient. And especially this being a Ram 1500 engine, it's really developed for a much larger vehicle. But it has its advantages in this Wrangler because it has an awesome level of power and torque. We've done a few videos on Wranglers. We haven't had a Rubicon in a while, but still I'll, sh I'll give you guys a quick walk around of this thing. I love the way it looks, especially when it's dirty. It looks good parked at the mall, it looks good parked on the trail. It's just proper. You've got these massive BFG KO2s. Great amount of ground clearance, brake over angle. These things will take you anywhere. But the real advantage to this new JL platform is its on-road manners. It's nothing like any other modern vehicle on the road. It's still got that wallowiness, that kind of unsettled, soft feeling over bumps and around corners. But it is livable now. It's quite a bit more refined. It's not, nowhere near the level of refinement the new Gladiator has on road, but it's, it's close and it's pretty good. You get a lot amount of usable space in this Wrangler four-door. This is a pretty nice spec in my opinion. You can fold down these rear headrests for better visibility. These seats come down really easily. They fold completely flat so you can fit a lot of stuff in the back here. You have grab handles on all four sides for passengers to get up into the vehicle. And I actually have a good amount of space back here with this panoramic fold back convertible roof. This is pretty cool actually. Press of a button, you've got a convertible, and you don't have to take off a bunch of roof panels. You don't have to scratch your hard top pulling it off in pieces. This is a cool option. It's four grand, but it's a cool option. Oh yeah, press of a button, you get the full Jeep experience. I like that. A little bit of rear, rear climate control. Lots of USB ports, type A, type C. Standard plug outlet, some cargo nets. What's not to love about this thing? It's got everything you need.
we haven't had a hard top Jeep. And uh, I will say the usability of this trunk space is quite nice. You can get a little, little storage compartment in the back here to hide some things. And of course, Jeep tells you all of your water fording specs, brake over angles, all that good stuff. De approach, departure, that's fun. Built in Toledo, Ohio. Let's take a look under the hood at this three liter turbo diesel. Fits in there quite well. It's actually pretty quiet and refined. Jeep did a little bit of work on this to deaden some of the sound at idle. And you still get a little bit of that diesel clatter when taking off, but overall it's a little bit quiet but you still know that it's a diesel and if I'm putting the extra six grand into this I kind of want to hear that also all right let's take this thing for a drive we have one of the highest res reverse cameras I've seen in a modern car and that's, that's kind of cool. I wish Jeep integrated some type of a trail cam system in this where you could see ahead of you, but I do appreciate that Wranglers tend to be a little bit more of an involved off-road experience. You get into some vehicles and they do all the work for you, and in this it still takes a little bit of uh, driver, driver skill to get you through technical trails and certain challenges. This Wrangler is pretty amazing in how it soaks up bumps and really takes the guesswork out of rough terrain. I hit a back road in this thing earlier and uh, there was washboarding, there was really deep potholes, it just floated over everything. And even over larger bumps and undulations, this new suspension, it's super supple. It's really, really nicely damped and tuned. Um, you know, there's, there's one action from the chassis and it just soaks it up and that's it. There's no bouncing around. It does get, it does get a little bit unsettled under cornering and bumps. It does tend to move around a little bit, but that's just the action of the solid axles. You can hear this diesel is actually pretty quiet. You get a little bit of a sense that it's there from the turbo whistle. But overall, between the wind noise and the hum from these BFG KO2s, it's relatively muted. You can hear stop start engaging there. Tuning from this eight speed is really, really good. This is a phenomenal transmission. I'm a little bit sad that they don't offer manual with this diesel, but at the same time, this eight speed is so good and so well tuned for the torque and the power delivery that uh, I kind of don't miss it. I've been getting pretty decent fuel economy with this thing too this week, averaging about 23, 24 miles to the gallon in mostly city driving. I think you could do pretty well on the highway with this, about 29 miles to the gallon if you kept your speeds below 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour. And you have everything you need in here. You have heated seats, heated steering wheel, a great infotainment system with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, fantastic sound system. You're getting a lot for your 65 grand.
just look at this passing power here. Really nice levels of torque. This eight speed holds gears beautifully. And I will say there is just a little bit more of a driving enjoyment factor from this three liter diesel. This is my favorite powertrain that I've ever driven in a Wrangler. Um, for that alone, it's probably worth a little bit extra. If you're already spending 40, 50, close to 60 grand on one of these, what's an extra six on a diesel engine if you're gonna be using it for its intended purpose and kind of putting it through its paces. This thing would just be awesome off-road. There's endless torque. It sounds great, it has really nice drivability. It gets good fuel economy. If you're gonna be overlanding this or doing longer trips and journeys, it's kind of the way to go. There's a cool factor too to just this having a diesel, I think. And um, I don't know, I really like this this thing. This has been a really, really fun car to drive this week. Definitely gotten under my skin as most Wranglers do. But uh, yeah, yeah, I dig it. If, if you want a comfortable, you know, luxurious SUV, there are many other better options for 65 grand. But if you want a Jeep, you're gonna get a Jeep. And uh, this is a pretty awesome Jeep. And this new JL does have pretty decent road manners. Let's do a little handling test here. <laughs> Those KO2s chattering away. It's fine, I mean, there's a little bit of steering feel. You can hear the squeal of the tires before everything gives up. The thing about this is it's it's engaging because it has these perceived low limits. And you can have fun just driving this thing around normally. There is quite a bit of wind noise at speed. You get up to 75, 80 miles an hour. It's not quiet in here, that's for sure. But under 70, it seems to be kept pretty well in check. with a soft top you do hear just about everything going on around you a hard top jeep would be significantly more eh, a little bit more quiet a little bit more sound deadening all that good stuff but i do think you'd be giving up a real advantage that this wrangler offers this folding back uh, soft top is pretty cool and i think it'd be really useful in the summer For example, look at just how it handles the speed bump here. Not a big speed bump, but it just glazes over it. No big deal. Easy. I love the turbo noises that this thing makes. guys well here we are we'll wrap this one up hard parked 
in the movie theater parking lot. <laughs> Overall, a great vehicle. I have truly enjoyed this this week. Though I will be glad to get back into my Lexus GX460 with its truly luxurious road manners. That said though, this thing is fun. It's totally livable, it's totally dailyable, and uh, I love the capability that this Rubicon has. Just promise me this, if you get one of these things, take it off road, use it, enjoy it, get it muddy, get it dirty. I see way too many pavement princesses hard parked at Starbucks these days. And uh, I mean, if you just want to save it for the next owner, that's fine. But these things are so capable and so much fun off road. that, eh, you should go out and enjoy it. Have some fun. It's what it's for. And that's all the off-roading I've done this week. So, cool. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Let me know if you have any questions on this. We're also going to be posting some videos of this Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Eco Diesel on Winding Roads YouTube channel. And uh, Charlie from Daily Motor has a couple videos on this that he'll be posting too. So, lots of content. We'll be doing some more off-roading with these this later this summer once parks open up. It's a little bit muddy right now, which I guess would be fine, but <sighs> we'll do some off-roading later this year. I promise. Until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.